right? whole bit. Exactly. David Melcher, of course, he's the uh, he's the co-founder of Sports One Marketing. Now, Lee Steinberg, good friend. You were with Lee for many, many years. Just yep. saw him. We just saw Lee. He's going to be by tomorrow talking to us. Killing it. He's got a Temple kid this year. Yeah, he does. Harrison Hand. Harrison Hand. He's, who, he went to Baylor kids, and then Temple. Yeah, yeah, one of the rare. They usually go, you go from Temple to Baylor. Right. He went from Baylor to Temple. That's right. And he's going to be drafted this year. Now, how are you watch Temple football? He's a South close. Jersey kid. Yes. Yeah. Is he, where do you think he goes in the draft? Because ah, Temple's get a lot of kids. You know, Lee said it to me. He says, we've got all these Temple kids in the NFL. I know. You know, and we haven't really been taking advantage of that market there. Hasim Reddick, you look at the NFL players who are from Temple University, there's a lot of talent there. Yeah. And, you know, even Rutgers. A lot of these schools where you see guys in the NFL. Look at Harvard. Dude, How many guys does Harvard have in the NFL now? The state of New Jersey, the football talent in high school is through the roof. I mean, every Big Ten, you know, SEC, they were all coming up there to, to raid the state of New Jersey. And every now and then, Temple gets a couple of these guys. He's probably a mid to late round kid. Yeah. Yeah. So, David, now, obviously, you understand all this. is sports marketing and with Lee for many years and doing your own thing here. You've written books about it. What's going on with you now lately? Now, you got a Rose Bowl shirt on there. I like yeah, that. Yeah, I sit on the board of the Rose Bowl legacy. So, we kind of built that up to the number one stadium now in the country as a, as a legacy itself. Really understanding branding is what I've been working on the last three years, improving the model by branding myself. We've known each other long enough where I think the first time I ever came on, it was, you know, Lee's guy. And then yeah. it, was, <laughs> it was Warren Moon's partner. And, you know, now I think it's funny because of Instagram and LinkedIn and all the different digital media side of how to take good content and distribute it digitally. You know, I laugh because I'm standing over there with Sean Merriman, and I'm so used to everyone coming over to get his autograph, and I have more people coming to talk to me. Wow, I love, I love your motivational videos. I love this. So whether it's podcast, TV, I did a movie, all the different platforms, my philosophy is whatever I'm doing, capture it, which is why these guys have the cameras behind us, amplify it and perpetuate it, and where I think my specialty is monetization. You know, unlike the kids today that may be posting digital content, they don't understand a brand of how to monetize that brand. And I'm building a 20-year plan with not only my own brand, but the companies that I work with, the charities that I work with. As you know, with Lee, I learned everything has a charitable purpose or a cause. And that's truly my big mission is to use that platform to help more people. And now, Lee, this year, Make-A-Wish Foundation will be the beneficiary of his big party on, on Saturdays. It's one of our favorite. It's the only afternoon party. Yeah, the all Super Bowl week, the only except smart on party. Sunday. <laughs> it's the only smart party. Yeah, because it's there for networking, for people to get together and yeah. actually talk. You know, I, I, it's not just because I'm old. I just get frustrated when I'm somewhere and everyone, all it has to do is this dark drinking mm -hmm. and there's no discussion. Right. I'm, the, I'm here to learn. And there's so many interesting and fascinating people. I love to sit in the afternoon at the Super Bowl, discuss the game, discuss business, philanthropy, whatever it may be, and just blessed to have that party still 33 years. Unbelievable, yeah. And you, you talk about branding because, you know, we're on Twitch TV. We started a year ago. And, you know, Twitch was a, obviously a big gaming platform. And so now they expanded into sports. And they approached me and said, hey, we want to get some sports content. And you do digital. Let's put your show on. And so we did it. We started last month. It was the Final Four Monday National Championship game in college basketball. Last, I believe, it was April 1st or April 2nd. So that was our first show. We did it live at a bar in Montgomery County. And it was a slow build, and you have to be patient. You know, I've been around doing this for a long time, and then when you start a new venture, you're like, well, how am I going to promote it? How am I going to brand it? People know my name, but a lot of people don't know where I've been for years, you know, because mm -hmm. I haven't been active. I haven't been doing terrestrial radio full time for a few years. And so they always, like, find, they find you. People, oh, that's the guy from the Madden game, or that's the guy who was on Best Dam, or it's Fox at ESPN. And so when you start again and you're rebooting and you're doing something digitally, which is we know is the future, of pretty much all content. In fact, now most people get their content digitally. Correct, and it's interesting because we always sold reach in advertising and marketing and sponsorship. This is how many people you could reach, mm -hmm. right? The cable, they were great at saying 80 million homes. It seemed like every single channel was 80 million homes. What you don't understand, digitally, Twitch TV, you have 4.2 billion reach. Yes. Yeah. 4.2 billion reach. So here was my philosophy when I started three years ago at the Super Bowls, my first branding of Dave Meltzer. And people thought I was crazy. I said, I want this year two people to be ambassadors. Of, I don't care about how many followers. I want two people out there by the end of the year that says, have you heard Dave Meltzer? you got to listen to Dave Meltzer. And they're capable of getting two more people every year because the – I know math, unlike the young people. Unlike me, I'm terrible. <laughs> so this is my math. I'm old. I told my wife, I was turning 50. I said, think about it. Five years from now, I'll have 64 people. 
telling 60 poor people a year. 10 years from now, I'll have 2,000 people telling 2,000 people. 15 years, it's 64,000 telling 64,000. In 20 years, when I'm 70 years old and doing this fun stuff digitally, 2 million people would be telling 2 million people a year. And I've created an annuity and a legacy for myself that was never possible for Lee's guy or Warren Moon's partner. Hmm. That is awesome. No, awesome. And now, I got to say, your weekly newsletters are awesome. And the last one that you sent out just before the Super Bowl was the Stuck in a Rut. Yeah. It spoke to me so much. I was like, this you're, you're writing about me. You're, you're writing to me personally. You know what's interesting is I learned frequency in the traditional way with Aikman, Moon, and Young. Each of those men had their own frequency. And what I stopped doing was trying to talk to everybody. And so I will send out a message that has a strength of a signal, a spectrum of a signal, and a clarity of a message that more people will tell me, oh my gosh, I, I, I just want to tell you this touched me, this movie. And then they want to see what's coming next week. And it just builds and builds and builds. And I think everyone has a frequency. And we now have access to 4.2 billion people and growing. And Twitch, I invested and I thought it was going to be my worst investment in my life, into overactive media's Splice, the Toronto team, with Marcus Colston and Better World Peace, told my wife we're going to lose all our money. It's the best investment I've had in the last three years, this eSport <laughs> this eSport team. And I'm still trying to get my nine-year-old to explain exactly what I invested in, but it seems to do really well. <laughs> you know, Harry does his stuff with branded sports. I mean, there's so much content and so many content providers who are looking for unique content. You know, and when I say unique, like this is unique content to some people because it's personality driven. There's so much out there. We had Lily Singh on a little earlier. You know, she started out Indian woman, went on, started creating content, blogs, got 14 million mm -hmm. followers, and then NBC approaches her, gives her a show. Actually, they gave her a, a comedy, uh, she did a comedy pilot, and they said, no, you're not right. But then they saw her, and they found another show and put her on late night after Seth Meyers. And so now she's got her own commercial on the Super Bowl for, for uh, Olay. It's just an amazing development. When, when people like your content, whether it's spoken or written or whatever form it is, they will follow you, and they'll, 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 they'll share it. Well, how about the Barstool situation? Yeah, you see today. what just happened? Yeah. This, this mean, is breaking news. Yeah, yeah I mean, Barstool has sold to Penn National Gaming for $450 million. And over $100 Holy. million in cash. Oh, my God. Portnoy does that mean Devin wow. Portnoy doesn't do pizza reviews? And he'll eat the so. whole pie now. He doesn't just take one bite out of it, right? That's is that amazing. what's going to happen? I think so. <laughs> He's That's the guy unique. that told me if he could get $10 million, he would quit and play golf every day. So That's I'll what see, I would do, too. I'll see what Dave is going to really yeah. do now. No, I'm good for them. You know yeah. why? Because, you know, you know, Howard Stern did the, uh, the, the approach, the so-called average person, with his approach to being outrageous and outlandish on radio, and then he took it to satellite. And Barstool found that niche. You know, there's been a lot of content in sports where it's a little – I mean, I've always done the fun stuff and the wacky stuff. They were able to brand that, call it Barstool, the guy sitting in a bar, and now have people from – Every age group, from teenagers all the way up to, you know, death, people are following that content. Yeah, it's really good, unique content speaking to a frequency, right? Yep. And including being able to leverage. They're so smart. The smartest thing they did is leverage the power of the NFL against them. So there's two ways to use the NFL. You can pay millions and millions of dollars to put your sleep number thing up here and do commercials with all the expensive guys, as you see. Yep. Or you can be smart like Dave Portnoy and get the NFL to kick you out of every game, the radio row. Yeah. But you're at the front of every news That's scene because the NFL is promoting you for free. <laughs> right. No, you're exactly right. And everybody thought it was these guys were just dumb businessmen. They knew. They knew. The same thing, they had to settle the lawsuit where he criticized he was the union thing, right? He, was, he, did, he made a fake account talking about unionizing Barstool, and he was against it, and we didn't, want, no, we didn't want anybody to unionize it. And then the union people went after him, and then they had to sue, but Barstool had to pay because, and, and remove all that content, but the publicity they got as a result of this mm -hmm. controversy you know, drove the stock price, drove the, their, their, <laughs> the actual price, the actual retail price right. of the purchase out of control. And by the way, my buddy Dean in Clearwater, he said, I told you to buy Penn Gaming. And he's been <laughs> telling me that. For, and I'm like, ah, you know, gambling, there's so many sites. And so today, the Penn Gaming is involved, right? Yeah, So absolutely. they own Barstool yeah. now? Yeah, exactly. And gaming's going to really take off. Is in the last 18 months, over 20 states have accepted the you know legalization of gaming. Including we, Pennsylvania. Yeah, yes. we do yeah. not even understand the, the effect of this because there's as much as they think there's a couple two hundred billion dollars gambled a year i think that estimates very low yeah and these states are going to really determine wow 
I think the mafia may have been making some money over the last <laughs> hundred years. Yeah, but the thing, where have we been? But the thing about the mafia never did in-game betting, and that's, that's where the awesome. whole thing is going to yeah. really yeah. explode. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. I can't wait to bet uh, punt or pat, like right, kick right. or play run. Play by play. Exactly. Yes. That's going to yeah. be awesome. Yeah, we have a, a, one of our great uh, people that comes on every year is Dan Wallach, who's, who's an amazing legal mind. and He knows the gambling. He knows which states are coming up, which states don't have it. And the one thing which is really held back is California is not going to have it for a long, long time because of the Indian reservation Correct. controlling it is that right? and not mm -hmm. wanting to have online ability to, yeah. to gamble because that would blow it way out of the water. So they have the control. They can't reach compromises. And so California, the I don't biggest think Florida has it either. No, Florida does. Vegas yeah. loves that, though, because yeah. well, they yeah. feed all those California oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But imagine if just at now, because New Jersey, once they went online, they were rivaling in some months beating the take from Las Vegas. Yes. And now you got Pennsylvania involved, and New York eventually New York, will get involved. Yeah. Connecticut, maybe. But if California alone, just imagine the take if people could gamble at home on and online, you have to go to a hard, you know, brick and mortar place, right. and there aren't that many of those either. Yeah, not at all. So it's going to be really an extraordinary way to understand sports as well, because you know, on the T bar or the L bar, as they say, Wayne Kimmel and Seventy Six Capital mm -hmm. with their network, which is the first kind of they have everybody's lines up there. It's that first ESPN of gambling. Right. You know, things like that have never been seen before. It's going to be really unique as we're building brands within gambling, the information of gambling, how exciting, just like fantasy changed for men and women, how the effect of that, you know, equality within sports, gambling could actually help and create more awareness for sports that we don't even know about. The great oh, no. Dave Meltzer. How, now, how do we get the? How do people get your content? Which, <laughs> I want the information. Yes. My name David Meltzer. So at David Meltzer on Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn. If you Google David Meltzer, I'll come up. My website's D Meltzer. First Which initial I have last name. Up on the screen right now for those of you watching on Twitch, um, I can add the uh, handles as well for your social media. Thank you so Beautiful. much. No, David. I mean, you know, you're a brilliant guy. I mean, that's what you have to. You have to think. You have to think. What's next? We already knew what happened before. It's what's going to happen next. It's not that you're a prognosticator. It's not like picking football games and who's going to win and who's going to cover the number. It's about digital, understanding. I mean, I embraced digital seven years ago, and guys in my generation, nah, you know, I don't know on Twitter. I don't go, oh, what digital? i got to turn I'm on I'm an TV. analog man. I'm an analog. i got to turn on 60 minutes at 8 o'clock. Mike his flip phone, right? Exactly. Now, I love the flip phone. I'm going to go back to that, but I don't need that. I need, I need to know what the future is, what people are consuming Content and it's 99% of it's digital now. Even your television shows on demand. I mean, it's an on demand world. It's when you want it, not when right. you're going to tell me I want it. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So we're live right now on Twitch all over the world, but people can watch this later on if they're not here live. You know, and then they can listen to it live on all the audio uh, platforms. So content is available everywhere, and if you have good enough content, you're going to succeed. It it's, it's, not, it's not that difficult, is and it? And it's perpetual, and you can drive traffic exactly. back to something that we talked about, like pen gaming or some other topic. If we're smart enough through the ability to search, we can now post stuff from five years ago, and it will take on more interest than it did five years ago.